Air superiority equals victory on the ground. Every soldier is well aware of this fact, and while the projects of Russia, China, and Japan to create a fifth generation fighter are still being discussed around the world, the United States has not only kicked off their mass production, but has also announced the successful testing of a new generation fighter. In today's video, we'll try to pull back the mysterious curtain, even with all the intrigue already surrounding this promising project. At a time when combat aircraft from the 4th, 4 Plus, 4 Plus Plus generations are more than relevant, the 5th has not been fully realized, and some countries still only have the 3rd generation platforms in service. The US, September 14, 2020, decided to up and waved around this sensational news. News that the 6th generation would come before 2030. We have already built a full-scale prototype and carried out a full-fledged demonstration flight and we have broken all possible records in this regard. We're talking about a joint project between the US Air Force and US aircraft companies, which bears the proud name of Next Generation Air Dominance. And, of course, a single aircraft cannot guarantee dominance, even if it is of the sixth generation, so the program is developing as many as five aspects that are combined into one single system. These developments deal with completely new engines, not just the modernization of existing ones. There's also the creation of central networks defined by certain principles for conducting combat operations. We've got artificial intelligence, cyber weapons, and directed energy weapons as well. So what will the 6th generation fighter be like in general? Well, as a matter of fact, there are no set, defined, mandatory criteria for its creation. Now, of course, we don't know all the secrets behind the Next Generation Air Dominance Program, but thanks to the Air Force Chief of Staff, General Charles Brown, and the Head of the Air Combat Command, General Mark Kelly, some details have since become known. First, the program is looking at a heavy fighter type with a long range and payload. These monsters are set to be used for operations in the Indo-Pacific region. Secondly, active development of a light fighter with a shorter range and combat load is also underway. Such machines may come in handy in Europe. In principle, these combat birds will provide assistance for NATO troops and will be able to enter the so-called A2AD, Anti-Access Area Denial Zones. Indeed, even with superior forces, troops cannot penetrate these areas without sustaining unacceptable damage and loss. Naturally, the system of systems will be multi-purpose, capable of conducting both air combat and attacking ground targets, breaking through any air defense systems. Additionally, NGAD will be able to protect troops and rear facilities from air attacks and also counter enemy air reconnaissance. The central element of the system is a fighter capable of operating at any time of the day, even under severe weather conditions. No wonder they intend to give it the name and NATO classification of F-48 Terminator. Various concepts for the future aircraft have already been presented to the public more than once, but the latest picture presented in the US Air Force procurement report building the digital force is a blockbuster-worthy one. It boasts features of the experimental Northrop X-35 heavy bomber, a scaled-down prototype of the XB-35 jet aircraft from McDonnell Douglas for NASA and even the Boeing Bird of Prey. Of course, the tailless integral layout with a flying wing, two air intakes, and two engines is just a render that will need to be filled. But it is this form that will allow the aircraft to be less visible on radar. It is currently believed that the 6th generation fighters should be distinguished by extreme stealth. This factor is definitely one of the primary means of defense and the main guarantee of survival. But is it so important in today's reality? Will the vaunted new generation Russian photon radar made to search for stealth targets make such a component obsolete? According to the Russian Radio Electronic Technologies Group, they have successfully tested their phase antenna array based on radio photonics ROFAR. Their technology will allow the transceiver to be integrated into the skin of a ship, aircraft, submarine, or satellite as well as increase the radar field of view. This, of course, is very impressive, but we're already well aware of the second most armed army in the world. So for now, the Russians should study Harry Potter's Hominum Revelio spell instead of introducing Sixth Order technologies. Moreover, this setup was created based on the original Russian component base. 
In the meantime, stealth technologies remain more than relevant, despite the negative impact on flight performance, increased production costs, and the cost of maintaining vehicles. It doesn't matter if the radar sees an approaching fighter. The main thing is when, because the military is well aware of the price of every extra mile that the plane flies undetected. And, of course, when creating a 6th generation fighter, special attention is paid to the effective scattering area. Granted, during the development of the aircraft, rather bold and unusual decisions were made in order to resolve the negative impact of stealth technologies. The report did not indicate the technical data of the aircraft, but based on the picture, it's possible to get some idea of what this future platform will be like. This futuristic vehicle has a swept wing, and its influxes are connected to the forward fuselage. The wing consoles are made in a trapezoidal shape, and they're the broken trailing edge for control surfaces and nozzles. One interesting solution is the pair of keels. In the right mode, they are folded into spaces provided on the wing, which significantly reduces the overall effective dispersion area. But in the working raised position, the keels increase the flight and maneuverability of the aircraft. In the forward section is a rudimentary fuselage of limited length, in which is located the cockpit and probably equipment compartments as well. But will the latest fighter be manned? For example, one of the main features of fifth generation fighters is non-afterburning supersonic flight. It's logical to assume that this function will continue into the next generation of aircraft. It's quite possible that the thrust to weight ratio of the vehicles will also be higher, allowing them to come close to hypersonic speeds and increase flight altitude. Flying and maneuvering at such speeds already approach the limits of the human body. This concerns not only the physiological limitations of the human body, but also the ability of the pilot to make quick decisions. On June 27, 2020, a kind of competition was held between a machine and a person at the University of Cincinnati. An experienced pilot, retired U.S. Air Force Colonel Gene Lee Focus, and a computer converged on a flight simulator. The result was as expected. The electronic enemy reacted faster than the person and always chose the most effective battle tactics. Additionally, the smart drone does not need life support systems nor the same autonomous evacuation vehicle. This will not only significantly reduce the price and overall cost of operation, but also make the aircraft much more maneuverable. Developers are also working to also solve this problem, of course. NGAD will consist of optionally manned vehicles, that is, both human-controlled and in drone mode. What about the power cells? On the sides, we see a pair of advanced engine nacelles, the type of which is still unknown. It's assumed they will use engines with an adaptive cycle, developed under the Adaptive Engine Transition Program AETP, and the Next Generation Adaptive Propulsion NGAP, these being planned for 2025. The air intakes are brought to the upper surface of the wing and are shielded from below from radiation. Similarly, flat nozzles with lattice deflectors were also constructed. It is not currently known whether special S-shaped air intake channels will be used, excluding direct frontal translucence of the engine compressor blades, as in the American 5th generation fighters F-22 and F-35. However, it is worth noting that the Russians plan to use a coaxial radial array made of radar-absorbing materials for their Su-57, NATO designation Felon. In terms of armament, things get even more vague. Of course, the picture shows the possibility of carrying medium-range air-to-air guided missiles of the AIM-120 type, nicknamed Slammer, but the schematically marked stuffing in the internal cargo compartment under the air intake channel technically still remains a surprise for the future enemy. Perhaps it will be some long-range weapon that's still in development or some directed energy weapon. It's not for nothing that the U.S. Air Force Research Laboratory AFRL, has issued a request for information necessary to create laser weapons. Theoretically, by working from aircraft engines, this would be able to fire an unlimited number of shots in battle. Although, perhaps by this time, a new long-range air-to-air missile AIM-260 will also be ready, which will successfully overtake Russian and Chinese fighters. As for centric networks, the newest fighter will receive all the network capabilities to work in a streamlined manner with other entities, facilitating communication with other aircraft, ships, or satellites. 
Such multi-domain awareness is possible without turning on one's own radar and other sensor systems. Also, the device would be able to control a whole swarm of drones. The actual prototype also has its own virtual copy. The latter will be used for early experimenting and testing of new solutions. Furthermore, the report showed ways of replacing various equipment and weapons in order to constantly upgrade performance. Development is planned according to a spiral scheme. At each turn, all devices in the program will receive new features every 5 to 8 years. It's difficult, of course, to estimate the dimensions and mass of the future 6th generation fighter from the picture, but it appears that it will be no less than those of the modern F-22 and may even have a greater mass, which means we should expect an increase in combat load and operational capabilities. The requirements for the 6th generation fighter state that piloting the fighter is optional, meaning this Terminator will receive remote, autonomous control. As for this primary platform's cost, it's still too early to say. However, thanks to a special approach called the Digital Century series, which is namely the separation of design, production, and support functions within the development process, development costs will increase by 25% and production costs by 18%. However, the total operating costs will be cut in half. Additionally, the cost of modernization will significantly decrease by 79%. Nearly $1 billion has already been spent in fiscal year 2020, with a total of $9 billion allocated for the project thus far out to 2025. The annual purchase involves contracts with several contractors at once, with 50 to 80 new aircraft every 8 years. In addition to the traditional ones chosen by the Pentagon, Companies that are completely new to the U.S. Air Force will also be involved with the contractors. 18 applications for participation have already been submitted. SpaceX is also not excluded, as it is capable of offering not only advanced technologies, but also competitive prices for their own products. So what about developments related to aviation in other countries? In Europe, they decided to jump right over the generation and started a project called Tempest. This is a joint work of companies from Germany, France, Britain, Italy, Sweden to create a 6th generation European multi-role fighter. They plan to display the technology to the public in 2025 and test the prototype in 2035. Back in June 2016, over in Russia, Vladimir Mikhailov, head of the Directorate of Military Aviation Programs for the UAC, announced the development of a promising 6th generation fighter. It would appear we're talking about two projects though. The S-70 Hunter Heavy Attack Drone and the T-50 PAKFA, a promising frontline aviation complex. What's strange is that the PAKFA is very similar in appearance to the American F-22. There is still very little information on both projects, but it's quite possible that they will face the same fate as the notorious Su-57 which received the impartial nicknames of Invisible Aircraft for the Poor, and was and still remains a prototype. What do you think? How soon will we see such an engineering masterpiece in the sky? If you enjoyed today's video, give it a like, and don't forget to hit that notification bell for more.